Hey, happy new year, City Light Church. Wow, can you believe it? January 1st, 2023. I'm kind of freaking out. I cannot believe we are here. And uh, I have to take a quick look back at 2022 and just say, to God be the glory. What an amazing year we had. We declared that 2022 was going to be the year of the open heaven that no matter what was going on around us, we were believing that the heavens were open above us. And honestly, I can say that was truly our testimony as a church, uh, as a ministry, and I know for so many of our individual lives, what a what an awesome year. So before I start talking about 2023, I just wanna thank you. I wanna thank you for your generosity. I wanna thank you for uh, your faithfulness. I wanna thank you for the way you love God and love City Light Church. Thank you, thank you, Thank you. And if this is your church, I want to encourage you to go to citylightvegas.com forward slash give and uh, begin the year off in generosity with your tithe and offering, uh, helping us begin this year strong. Uh, maybe City Light isn't your home church, but you just feel a connection to us and you feel like uh, you get fed from this ministry. I, I want to encourage you maybe to sow something into our miracle offering building fund as we prepare to break ground on our brand new building here in Las Vegas, the most unchurched city in the nation. Help us bring the gospel and the beautiful message of Jesus Christ to this city. But uh, man, I'm excited and I'm excited to share with you about 2023. Uh, the theme of this year is taking ground. We are believing to take ground really in every area of our life, wherever we've lost ground, wherever we've reversed, wherever we've given up ground to the enemy. Uh, maybe it was mistakes we made or maybe it was just spiritual attacks. We're believing that in 2023, we're gonna take ground. We're gonna take back ground in, in every area, financially, spiritually, emotionally, relationally. I'm really believing this is gonna be a year of victory. It's gonna be a year of moving forward. And honestly, what is so confirming this word to me is all the news out there. I mean, there everyone's just saying how bad 2023 is and I'm going, okay, that, that's what they're saying out there. I'm not in denial about it, but I'm believing that in the midst of all that is happening, um, out there in the world system, we are a part of the kingdom of God and we are going to move forward in Jesus' name. I wanna encourage you to turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 9. We're gonna look at a very famous prayer in scripture. If you uh, have been around church at all, you've heard this prayer. Maybe if you're new uh, to faith, new to Jesus, you're gonna love this prayer. It's, it's probably the prayer that I pray most often and uh, many have called it the prayer of Jabez. And so I'm so excited about it. And as you're turning to 1 Chronicles chapter 4, we're going to start in verse 9. Let me just remind you that we will be doing a week of prayer and fasting, uh, January 9 through 16. It's Monday to Monday, January 9 through 16. One week of prayer and fasting, seven days of prayer and fasting. Uh, what I'm personally doing is I'm going to be fasting sun up to sundown. And so I'll be eating dinner every night. But throughout the day, I'm going to be praying and fasting and seeking God. I'm going to do that for seven days. I'm asking you uh, to decide what you want to fast. And for seven days, join us in prayer and fasting, pushing away the plate in order to seek God. And uh, I'm going to get into a lot of detail next week about that. But you might want to do a Daniel fast. You might, uh, some of you might want to um, fast for a few days from food, uh, wh whatever you want to do. But for seven days, we're going to do prayer and fasting, and I'm so excited about it. And we'll be praying online and doing a lot of great things, but just want to encourage you to join us starting next Monday, January 9. Here's what First Chronicles chapter 4 says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. Uh, the prayer is awesome, but what makes prayer so awesome is our prayer answering God. Look at verse 10. And God granted his request. 
I wanna talk just for a couple of minutes from this subject, fight back. Fight back, can you throw that in the chat, fight back? Fight back, come on, fight back. Father, give us the faith, I pray today, to fight back, in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, it's very interesting, the name Jabez. It literally means pain. It means hurt, it means sorrow. This is what Jabez heard every time he heard his name, pain, pain, pain. Honestly, I think that with that word would have come maybe emotions like regret, like I made a mistake. I don't know why Jabez's mother named him this, but she placed upon him really a curse, regret, a reminder, a label of her own pain that she then passed down to her child. This was his name. This was what he thought he would have to live with. See, you got to remember that uh, today's very different than it was thousands of years ago. In Bible times, you were named and that name was way more important than just what's a cool name or what's a great name or what's a name that you heard that you like. No, the name was always going to be connected to your destiny. It was always going to be connected to some part of your life, some part of your future, some part of what you were called to do. So when Jabez is named this, when he's, when he's called pain, when he's given the label pain, the curse pain, the limitation pain, uh, that would no doubt affect him on an emotional level that would have hurt him more and more and more as he grew up. Um, it was, I believe, used by the enemy of his soul to, to keep him bound and stuck in limitation to take on a label that God did not give him, that his mother gave him. But here's my favorite part of the story, and I'm talking about fight back today. Jabez, he fought back. He pushed back. He, he resisted the labels given to him on earth, and he received what God had for him in heaven. He refused to let someone else write his story. He refused to let someone else decide his future or determine his destiny. But let me just say this. He did not do it alone. He partnered with God. He prayed to God. He depended on God and God helped him. Listen to me, friend. God will help you. You can fight back. You can fight back against limitation. You can fight back from, it's just going to be another year. You can fight back from the fear that we are hearing in our culture. You can push back. You can rewrite your story with the pen that God gives you. I'm not just talking about self-help. I'm not just talking about positive affirmations. I'm talking about getting God's plan agenda and opinion for your life and walking in that and not in what man has put on you. So if we're going to fight back, if we're going to push back, if we're going to if we're going to have a holy rebellion against the enemy of our soul and if we're going to step into what God has for us, here's here's the first thing that you have to understand. God wants to give you honor for pain. Honor for pain. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. That's the testimony of God. But his mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Watch this. God called Jabez honorable. Jabez's mother called him painful. Honor or pain? What the world says or what God says. What the world thinks about you or what God thinks about you. What the world says about you 
what experience says about you or what God says about you. See, she named him based on her experience, not his. Think about that. Because of her own pain, because of her own trauma, because of her own drama, she then, out of the abundance of her heart, speaks and speaks limitation over her son. She named his future based off of her past. She named his destiny based on her history. Do you see the limitation that is happening and we can all experience this? It might be from a parent, it might be from a teacher, it might be from uh, an authority figure in our life, it could be from a friend, it, it, it could be our own self-talk. Saying words that are binding us, stopping us, holding us, and keeping us stuck in the smallness of this world instead of entering into the all things are possible life that God has for us. But just like Jabez, we're gonna have to choose honor what God says over pain, what the world says. It's been said that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. I wish that was true, but it's not. I would actually say that words have done way more damage than sticks and stones. Way more than the physical damage of violence is the emotional toll that negativity has on our life. And by the way, if it's ever gonna produce into violence, it's gonna start in our mind, in our heart, and with our mouth. I wanna ask you today, just like Jabez, what names have you taken on? What identity have you taken on? Are you living under the shadow of what someone else has said about you? Are you living with the name the enemy gave you? Are you, are you living under the limitation that a person put on you? Because they, they could not see greatness for their own life, so they decided to speak smallness over your life. You got to know today, Jabez, that the pain that you've experienced might be a real chapter in your life. It might be a real part of your story, but it doesn't have to be your whole story. See, we love labels in our culture, don't we? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a divorcee. Yeah, I'm an addict. Yeah, I'm an alcoholic. Yeah, I'm really angry. Yeah, I'm really depressed. Yeah, I'm really OCD. Yeah, I'm really this. Yeah, I'm really that. We we love to, to take these things and, and to hold on to them if we're not careful. And I want to challenge you that just because you had an experience with something doesn't mean you have to live in that forever. Uh, it's very popular in our culture to say once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Once an addict, always an addict. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be wise and make great decisions, but listen to me. There is the truth of God's word that offers us freedom, not just trying to shove down our old self. The apostle Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. That that old me, he's gone. I know I look the same, but I'm not the same. I'm, I'm not the man I was before I met Jesus. Can I tell you? You don't have to live under the limitations of what someone said about you, what someone thinks about you, or what you've even done. You're not your worst mistake. You're not your weakest moment. You're not your past. You can begin again. You can. Maybe you've never heard that. Maybe you've never thought that. Maybe you've never believed that. But it's time to push off the labels of what someone else has put on you, and it's time to believe what God said about you. It's really amazing. I'm talking about fight back. And in Joel chapter 3, verse 10, the scripture says, uh, God is challenging the men. You're, you're going to go to fight. You're going to go to battle. You're going to go to war. And you will experience the victory. And he tells the soldiers to say something. He says, let the weak say I am strong. Think about it. 
He says, you're gonna have to watch your words when you're in a fight. I'm talking about fighting back. I'm not talking about fighting with natural hands. I'm not talking about a natural fight. I'm not talking about a, a fight in this world. I'm talking about a spiritual battle saying no to hell, no to the devil, no to the enemy of our soul. And God says, when you go to battle, you have to say, let the weak say I'm strong. This isn't some po uh, positive affirmation in a mirror. This isn't some, I think I can, I think I can. This is a, God told me to say it. See, the, the power is not in, I'm strong. The power is in, God told me to say it. And if I'll obey what God said, and if I'll say what God told me to say, there will always be victory. So I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about denial. I'm talking about getting God's word over your life. I know what's being said and I know what's been said against me and I know what I've even said about myself, but, but today I'm, I'm, I'm disagreeing with past words and now I'm coming into agreement with what God says. Scripture goes on to say in Isaiah 61 verse seven, instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Do you catch it? Not shame, not pain, honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. We're talking about taking territory this year. Double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Come on, it's time to fight back. It's time to fight back and believe God for double in Jesus' name. Secondly, if we're going to fight back, we're going to have to go into prayer for defeat. Now, the choice is ours. Will I live in a place of prayer or will I live in a place of spiritual defeat? Jabez cried out to God. There will never be victory. There can never be change. We will never take ground unless we pray. It is in prayer that the victory begins to manifest. It's in prayer that Jabez said, okay, here's what mama said about me. I'm gonna go talk to God. Here's what they're saying. I'm gonna go talk to God. Here's what the news is saying. I'm gonna go talk to God. Here's what the doctor said. I'm gonna go talk to God. Here's what that teacher said about me. I'm gonna go talk to God. Here's what, here's what my ex-spouse said about me. I'm gonna go talk to God. What God, what do you say? Jabez cried out to God. Man, I feel this. Psalm 56 verse nine says, the very day I call for help, the tide of the battle turns. My enemies flee. This one thing I know, God is for me. Jabez made up his mind that his words in prayer would be the deciding factor in his life, not his mother's words. Please hear me. I'm gonna say it again. Jabez made up in his mind that his words in prayer would be the deciding factor in his life, not his mother's words. Romans 10, 17 reminds us that faith comes by hearing. I just, I wanna say this, belief comes by hearing, trust comes by hearing. That whatever we're listening to the most will become the thing we put our trust in and our belief in. And Jabez knew, I'm gonna have to reverse these words that have been spoken over me with the word of God. In a life of defeat, I hear the words, I believe the words, I say the words, and then I live the words. That's how defeat works. But in a life of prayer, I hear the word, I believe the word, I say the word, and then I live in that word. This is why prayer is so important. You'll hear us talk a lot about having a time to read the Bible every day and pray every day. We, we talk about this a lot. Friend, it's not some religious uh, gymnastics. It's not some thing that we do so that we look more spiritual in front of people. It's not something we do so that we can boast about, oh yeah, I read the Bible today, I prayed today. It's simply the powerful reality 
that when I become a person of prayer and I become a person of the word, I will begin to hear that word from God. I'll begin to believe that word from God. I'll be, I'll be able to say that word from God. And then I will begin to live in that word from God. Your prayer life will decide your spiritual health. Your prayer life will decide your overall outlook on life. And your prayer life will decide your spiritual confidence. Jabez said, no, I know it's been said about me but I'm going to cry out to God and I'm going to get a word from God. I know what mama said. I'm going to get a word from God. I know what the news is saying. I'm going to get a word from God. I know what the doctor said. I'm going to get a word from God. And he cries out to God and it's like his, his prayer to God was a massive no to the enemy and a massive yes to God. And that's what it is. Every time we pray, we say no to hell and yes to heaven. Do you remember in Acts chapter 12, uh, this is Acts chapter 12, verse 5. The scripture says that Peter was in prison, but, and I love this. If, if you've gone to City Light, you've heard me talk a lot about this because it's such an important scripture to me. Peter was in prison. He was on death row. He was literally, he was going to die the next day. Peter was in prison, but the church prayed for him. But, but is a contrary statement but is a disagreement. No one wants a compliment followed by, but <laughs> you look great, but I agree with you, but no, you don't, you don't want to hear that. Listen, Peter was going to die, but the church rose up with a contrary statement. I was bound, but God set me free. My mother cursed me, but God has blessed me. They rejected me, but God has taken me in. I was broken, but God healed me. My life is moving in one direction, but then I fought back in prayer. Think about that. I was going one way, but then I fought back. I was going with the word spoken over me, but then I fought back. I was going with my dominant thought, but then I fought back. I was I was going with the culture and the and the the just the the stream of this world, but then I fought back and I fought back in prayer and I got a word from God for my life. And I didn't just give in. Jabez didn't just give in. He fought back in prayer. That's why we're doing seven days of prayer and fasting, because I want you to start the year off dedicated to God. Now, I said at the beginning of the message that I'm, I'm going to be praying sun up to sundown, and then I'll be eating dinner. And I actually got this from the book of Judges. This is Judges chapter 20, verse 26. It says that all the Israelites went up to Bethel, and they wept in the presence of the Lord, and they fasted until evening. So they went into the presence of God throughout the day, and they worshiped, and they cried out to God, and they fasted, and they sought God. And then they also offered offerings to God, but then they ate dinner. And it's something that I'm going to do this year. I've actually never done a fast like this, but I'm according to Judges 20, 26, I'm going to fast like this this year. And so I'm going to fast throughout the day. I'm going to study. I'm going to pray. I'm going to be in the word. And then at night, I'm going to eat with my family. And I, I know what I'm going to eat at night, and, and I'm still going to be on some kind of fast, but that, that's not really important. The idea is that I'm starting this year off in prayer, in focus. I'm, I'm going to put away the phone. I'm going to put away social media. I'm going to put away distractions. I'm, I'm going to get off YouTube. I'm going to get off shows. I'm, I'm not going to be watching anything. I'm, I'm going to be filling my heart and soul with the word of God and with prayer and with the presence of God. I'm believing that God's going to speak to me over these seven days. I believe God's going to speak to you. I believe we're going to get divine help from God. I, I didn't read it, but you Keep reading in Judges. Go to 27, go to 28, go to 29. Guess what? God gave them the victory. They began to pray. They began to fast. They began to seek God. God answered their prayer. God gave them revelation. God gave them an idea. And so I want to encourage you. Become a person of prayer. Jabin, I don't know how to pray. Jabin, I run out of words. Let me, let me tell you where prayer starts. It starts, one, in worship. Become a worshiper. Get worship music playing. Get, get praise and worship music going like never before. Just, just become a person of worship. And then from that place of worship, God's presence will begin to fill that car, fill that home, fill that room. 
God's presence will begin to meet you. And then from there, what will happen is faith will begin to rise. And you'll, you'll start believing God. You'll, you'll start thinking about needs. You'll start thinking about things going on in your, in your life and in your home and in your family. And you'll go, man, I need to pray for that, man. I need to pray for that, man. And just throughout the day, you'll, you'll pray and you'll worship and you'll worship and you'll pray and you'll praise and you'll worship and then you'll pray and then you'll talk to God about a need and then you'll talk to God about a dream and then you'll talk to God about what you're believing for and then you'll talk to God about something and it'll just, it'll just begin to happen. I wanna encourage you to pray. By the way, there's a great new book out called Pray First by Pastor Chris Hodges. And if you wanna take your prayer life to the next level, you gotta grab that book. Lastly, lastly, we're talking about fighting back. You're gonna to have to choose forward for neutral. You're gonna to have to choose forward for neutral. Jabez cries out to God and then he says this, oh God, that you would bless me. That you would bless me. This word literally means God empower me to do what only I can do if your blessing is upon me. It's literally a divine enablement, a divine empowerment. God bless me. This is how far I can go, but Lord, I know that if you'll bless me, I can go further. I'm believing God for blessing. He, he then kind of breaks down this bless me prayer in three ways. He says, enlarge me, enlarge my place, enlarge my my." I'm going to get into that in a second. He says, he says, enlarge my life. He says, put your hand on my life. And then he says, keep me from harm. Think about this. Jabez says, God, that you would bless me. And then he gives God three ways that he needs God's blessing. He says, number one, enlarge me. Impact. Bigger. Greater. What do Proverbs 11 say? The world of the generous is getting larger and larger. We've talked a lot about that verse. We're not just talking about bigger homes or bigger cars or bigger TVs or another boat or faster this or flashier this. We're talking about impact. We're talking about living big for God. We're talking about big faith, big prayers, big impact, big legacy, big life change. God, that you would enlarge me that you would enlarge my territory. Come on, we're talking about taking ground. God, enlarge my territory. God, make my footprint in the world bigger, not for my glory, for your glory. Help me to be a greater blessing to everyone around me. Uh, you, you gotta believe for that. It's in the Bible. Believe God. Lord, in 2023, I wanna help more people. I wanna give more money away. I wanna see more people come to Christ. I wanna bring more people to church. I wanna see more of my family get saved. I wanna see more prayers answered. God, enlarge my territory. Lord, I've had victory in this area, but I'm believing for victory in all these areas. Enlarge my territory. Lord, I've, I've, I've had some, some seasons of, of, of good things, but man, then I've had a lot of defeat. Enlarge my territory. Let, let us... Let me as a person, let us as a family, Lord, let us take on more territory for the kingdom and enlarge my life. Again, not just for bigger and flashier, but for impact, for legacy, enlarge me. Then he says, put your hand on me. That's favor. I'll tell you, favor can do what nothing else can do. I tell people all the time, Work like it all depends on you, but pray like it all depends on God. And when you'll work hard and pray hard, <laughs> let me just tell you what happens. Favor is unleashed. You know that Jesus grew in favor? Luke chapter 2, verse 52, he grew in favor. You can grow in favor. Your favor can grow. Where people just look at you and go, I don't know what, I, I like you. I trust you. I, I want to buy a house from you. I want to give you a promotion. I wanna help you. I, I wanna make sure your dream comes true. I wanna, I wanna help you succeed. I'm telling you, God will give you favor. God will give you favor. And Jabez prays, God, let your hand come upon me. Let, let your blessing, let your favor come upon me. Let, let your hand of 
provision and blessing and favor be upon my life. And then, and then he says, and keep me from harm, protect me, protect me from sickness, protect me from disease, protect me from ailments, protect me from pandemics. God, protect, protect me from calamity. Protect, God, protect my life, protect my heart from offense. Protect my, my soul from hatred. Protect my mind from perversion. God, protect me. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. Do you, do you see it? God, protect me so that when you do bless me, I don't mess it up. Protect me. God, heal my body. Strengthen my life. Protect our marriage. Protect my babies when I, when I send them off to school every day. God, let your hand of protection come upon me. And you know, I'm, I'm saying all these things and I can, I can kind of hear religious people on the other side of this camera. I can kind of hear you like, wow, that's a lot of me, me, me. A lot of me, me, me. Wow, favor. Whoa, blessing. Whoa, protection. Wow, kind of. <laughs> Did you see how the, you see how the verse ended? It didn't end with God, with, with the scripture saying, and God rebuked Jabez for asking for blessing. Lord, we don't want blessing. We just, we just want you, Lord. Isn't that so spiritual? It's so spiritual, it's just not in the Bible. God granted his request. Okay, I, I can't imagine going to hang with my little six-year-old daughter and we're getting in the car to maybe go somewhere. She goes, Dad, I'll walk. I, 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 don't, I don't need a blessing. I'll, 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 I'll walk. I'll walk. Can you imagine? Going to Chick-fil-A, try to buy her little chicken nuggets. No, Dad, I'll, I'll, I'll pay. It's, it's okay. I just want you, Dad. I, I don't want your blessing. No. Just, we're, we're, so, we're so ridiculous sometimes. God is good. God is our Father. And just like you parents want to bless your kids, God wants to bless his kids. God granted his request. Can I just tell you, I'm coming into agreement with you today that God's going to grant your request. I'm believing that 2023 is going to be a year of answered prayer. I'm not saying you're going to get everything you could ever. I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm not talking about lust. I'm not talking about, about greed. But I am saying that we can go to God and say, God, would you enlarge my territory? Would you enlarge my life? Would you put your hand of blessing and favor upon me? Would you bless me with protection and health and strength? Absolutely. We can believe God, and we should believe God. Jabez heard one thing the first part of his life, but then he fought back. He fought back in prayer, and it changed everything. And I'm believing the same for you in Jesus' name. We've got people watching online. We've got our friends in correctional facilities. Can I tell you, you can fight back. I'm not talking about naturally. I'm talking about spiritually. You can win in life. You can, you can change the story. You can rewrite. You cannot rewrite history, but you can rewrite your destiny. Cry out to God like Jabez cried out to God, and God will hear your prayer. Father, I pray for my friends today. I, I pray that you give us this year the courage and the faith and the humility to cry out to you. Lord, I know you want to answer our prayers. I know you have a desire to bless your children. So, Lord, we're asking for more grace, more mercy so that we can reach out and receive everything that you have for us. Hey, maybe you're watching right now and you don't know the Lord, you've never surrendered your life to Christ. Can you pray a prayer, something like this? Pray words like this. It's not about the words, it's about your heart. The Bible says anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Call on his name right now. Believe God, believe God, believe God. God will forgive you. God will change your life. Say this, say Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. Forgive me of my sin. Make me brand new. Jesus, be Lord of my life. Amen. And amen and amen. Praise God. Hey, would you um, tell us right now, if that was you, if you just gave your life to Jesus, let us know in the chat. Reach out to the church. We want to help you and 
give you any information you need. If you're in Vegas, please come worship with us. We, uh, we worship at Sierra Vista High School, 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. We would love to have you. And again, if you feel a connection to this ministry, would you help us financially? Would you sow into what God is doing here? Uh, God is really moving at City Light Church, and we want you to be a part of that because um, it, it's, an awesome, it's an awesome moment that we're in, and we want you to be connected to it. We really appreciate your generosity. Well, I can't wait to see you next week. I love you so much. I'm grateful for you. Go to citylightvegas.com if you need anything. Find us on Instagram, on Facebook. We want to be a blessing to you. Thank God for you. I'll see you next Sunday.